I'm sure you're excited to learn how to have a 50% return every year. Just how did Warren Buffett do it? In a Business Week interview in 1999, Warren Buffett said that he can guarantee that he could make a 50% return in a year if he only managed $1 million. To quote him fully, if I was running $1 million today, or $10 million for that matter, I'd be fully invested. Anyone who says that size does not hurt investment performance is selling. The highest rates of return I've ever achieved were in the 1950s. I killed the Dow. You ought to see the numbers, but I was investing peanuts then. It's a huge structural advantage not to have a lot of money. I think I could make you 50% a year on $1 million. No, I know I could. I guarantee that. What he said in 1999 doesn't exactly apply now because currently Warren Buffett manages way more than $1 million or even $10 million. As of November 17, 2021, Berkshire Hathaway's net worth is $796.24 billion. As you can see, he now manages hundreds of billions of dollars. But if he were to manage only $1 million, Buffett expects he can make a 50% return on that investment. Buffett would use certain strategies to achieve this. That's what I'm going to show you in today's video. Hi, and welcome to Business Reactor, where we will be showing you the latest tips and tricks in the financial space as well as business and entrepreneurship. If you want success in your life and business, then you came to the right place because in this channel, we help you in getting ready for success. For more latest success tips from our videos, subscribe to our channel and click on that notification bell button. Let's get right into it. Strategy number one, start with being a small cap investor. What exactly is small cap? It's a public company whose total market value ranges from $300 million to $2 billion. These days, Warren Buffett doesn't really look at the small companies since he manages billions. Even if he had half a million dollars with a million dollar investment in a smaller company, it wouldn't make much of a difference in the hundreds of billions of dollars that he's managing. But if he did manage only a million dollars, he would invest in all small cap companies. And that 50% return of $500,000 would generate a huge difference in his portfolio. How would Warren Buffett achieve this high return in this case? Let's take it from the man himself. He says, Look at everything and look for the small securities in your area of competence where you can understand the business and occasionally find arbitrage situations or little wrinkles here and there in the market. I think working with a very small sum, there is an opportunity to earn very high returns. Basically, Buffett is saying that you need to know what your area of competence is. What kind of industry do you understand and are interested in? Is it tech, banking, gaming, entertainment? When you've chosen an industry, commit to becoming an expert in that field. You'll need to read, study, and understand that industry. Study the small cap stocks in your chosen field. This is very essential. Chances are you'll find great hidden opportunities here and there to make high returns such as arbitrage situations. This is when you simultaneously buy and sell a stock in different markets to take advantage of tiny differences in their price. Strategy number two, only consider companies in well-regulated countries. So, you now know how to start with small cap companies. However, it's very important where you look for such companies. You have to make sure that the companies that you're looking to invest in are countries where business practices are solid and trustworthy and the market is well regulated. With small businesses, you need to know that the information and figures they publish are trustworthy. Warren Buffett loves American stocks. U.S. companies are known worldwide to be reputable and credible. The U.S. stock market is strictly regulated by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and other financial agencies. They regularly check the accuracy of figures released by public companies. So the U.S. is the best place to invest in small cap stock, as Buffett would tell you. Other developed countries such as Canada, the U.K., and Australia are fine too, as their security regulation are up to par as well, and they have dependable business practices. My preference, though, would still be the U.S.A. Beware of investing in small companies in third world countries and countries that are relatively new to the stock market. The same goes for those companies where business practices are questionable 
and the industry isn't well regulated. I wouldn't recommend investing in Chinese companies because the figures they publish can't really be trusted. If you doubt this, ask knowledgeable people who are living in China or in smaller third world countries about these things. I honestly think it's not worth the risk investing in these countries. Strategy number three, purchase below intrinsic value. This is relatively easy to do with a small cap stock, but they are often underanalyzed. So you will find many opportunities to buy such stock well below intrinsic value. But you might be wondering, what is intrinsic value? As I mentioned in another video, intrinsic value is basically the stock's true value, what it's actually worth. It's different from the current stock price, which changes according to the whims of the stock market. Learn how to calculate a stock's intrinsic value so that when you look at a small cap stock, you can see whether or not it's well below it. If it is, then it's a great opportunity to buy. You'll have a higher chance of having really high returns. Ah, but now I can almost hear you saying, great to know, but how do I calculate for a stock's intrinsic value? Well, there are several ways to do this. The simplest way is asset-based valuation. Simply subtract the total of a company's liabilities from the total of the company's assets, and that's the intrinsic value. In other words, intrinsic value equals total assets of the company, both tangible and intangible, minus total liabilities of the company. Now, the downside to this method is it doesn't account for any company growth, so this method usually gives lower intrinsic values than other approaches that are more complex, such as discounted cash flow analysis and financial metric PE ratio analysis. Like I mentioned earlier, when you buy a stock well below its intrinsic value, you'll get a higher return. Strategy number four, don't blindly follow the crowd. Another way to look at this when investing is by taking to heart one of Warren Buffett's famous quotes. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. As I mentioned earlier in this video, many investors let their emotions dictate their investing decisions. A good example is when Facebook stock plunged in 2018 to as low as almost 40% by November of that year due to several scandals and incidents that worried investors. Many started unloading their Facebook shares in panic when actually that was the best time to invest in Facebook because the price became so low. Everyone was fearful and panicking, so it was time for a smart investor to be greedy. If you look beyond the stock price, the fundamentals of Facebook were still pretty good. Their user base and business were growing and expanding. They had many innovations up their sleeve. Those who took advantage of that stock plunge in 2018 made some pretty great returns by not blindly following what everyone else was doing. Always remember that investing is for the long term. Market will rise and it will fall. But if you did your homework and know and understand the industry you're investing in, you'll be able to make wise decisions with your investments based on facts rather than emotions. Strategy number five, keep reading, keep analyzing. The most successful investors are those that put in the work to read and analyze the most stocks. Peter Lynch, one of the most successful investors in history, always emphasized how important it is to understand what you own. To do that, you need to do a lot of reading, studying, and analyzing. He said in an interview with Frontline, If you looked at 10 companies, you'd find one that's interesting. If you'd look at 20, you'd find two. Or if you looked at 100, you'll find 10. The person that turns over the most rocks win the game. And that's always been my philosophy. Generally speaking, your returns will be better when you go through more companies, read more shareholder reports, and increase your investing savvy. Even Warren Buffett put in a lot of work to study and go through stocks. He spent hours reading the Moody's and Standard and Poor's manuals, looking for stocks. He said, I went through the manuals page by page and went through 20,000 pages in the Moody's Industrial Transportation banks, and finance manuals. Twice, I actually looked at every business, although I didn't look very hard at some. All that reading paid off eventually. In fact, when asked in an investing class at Columbia Business School about how to prepare for an investing career, Buffett answered, read 500 pages like this every day, referring to the manuals. And there you have it. These are the five strategies that you can use to have a high return based on Warren Buffett's advice. 
And that's it for today. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for up-to-date videos on new trends and tips in the financial space, as well as business and entrepreneurship. Also, do leave a comment below if you have any thoughts and give a press on that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.